Hi everyone, I hope you are doing great and welcome back to another video. So in this video, I'm covering discount lack of marketability and it can be considered as a continuation of my last video where using the option pricing model, I have arrived at a per share common value, common stock value along with preferred shares and other contingent securities such as option and warrants. And we briefly discuss why this discount is important uh, for a company that is privately held. But in this video, we are going to go in details and discuss what is discount lack of marketability and what are the methods available to arrive at or calculate this discount lack of marketability. So first, let's go through the definition. So lack of liquidity is a form of DLOM that exists when an interest holder cannot dispose of the interest quickly unless the holder is willing to accept a significant reduction in value. So unlike uh, public companies, the share of a privately held companies is not so liquid. So when you hold this, these kind of stocks, there's a risk that at a time when you're holding it and at a time you're going to eventually sell it, there is a risk of reduction in value. And this marketability discount take care of the same risk from the eyes of an investor. So discount lack of marketability have been subject of controversy in valuation as they can result in significant value reduction compared with pro-rata value of business interest. Now let's discuss on the method. So there are mainly two methods available. Uh, first is the benchmark study which uses the restrictive stock and IPO pricing data and the second is the security based approach which uses the option pricing model. So we're gonna, going to go through both the methods. So within the benchmark study method we have restricted stock method. Okay, let's discuss restrictive stock method. So in order to align the interest of management and shareholder, the company issues stock is in compensation to their employee. Now these particular shares are restrictive in nature because they cannot be easily sold in the market and sometimes employees have to fulfill certain condition. Uh, for example, uh, be in the company for at least three, uh, five year. Having said that, there are a lot of empirical studies being undertaken which compares the uh, risk, uh, the price of uh, these restrictive uh, stocks versus uh, publicly available in the secondary market. And uh, this is applicable for uh, public companies. So uh, let's go through the slide. For a public company, restricted stock consists of unregistered shares of ownership that are not publicly traded and are usually held by insiders such as executive and directors. They are restrictive since they have restriction in terms of being non-transferable and non-sellable to deter the early selling of the shares. Since executive and directors need to have a vested interest in the company, they must hold a certain number of shares themselves so that their interests align with the shareholders. The restrictive stock method of measuring the DLOM assume that the difference between the regular common stock and restricted stock is the amount of DLOM. So let's say uh, if the price of uh, restrictive stock is $8 and uh, the price of, uh, price of the same share which is available in the secondary market uh, is $10, uh, that imply, implies that the discount is 20%. So I have taken a snapshot of empirical studies of these restricted stocks and uh, these are uh, various studies and the observation period and what are, what is the median uh, price discount. So on the basis of these studies going from 10% to 45% and uh, uh, taking a glance it's the, the average across the studies uh, looks like around 20 to 25%. Okay, so the next method under the benchmarking method is the IPO method. So within the IPO method, uh, what you do is you compare the pre-IPO price versus the price when the stocks gets listed on the secondary market. And uh, whatever the price difference is the lack of marketability discount. So let's see what this slide says. And uh, initial public offering is the process of offering shares of a uh, private company to the public through a new stock issuance on the financial exchange. It allows a private company to gain access to a broader range of investor as well as improve the uh, legitimacy of uh, company, uh, general definition of what, what IPO is. The IPO stock goes through a process of moving from pre-IPO price to post-IPO price. The pre-IPO price potentially represent the value of private company and the post-IPO price represent the value of now public company. The IPO method of measuring the DLOM assume that the difference between the two prices is the amount of the DLOM, the discount lack of marketability. So 
so there are various studies undertaken by different institutes i have taken a snapshot over here uh, and this empirical studies have been undertaken by valuation advisors so according to them they have considered the ipo year from 1995 to 2012 this is the period the pre ipo and post ipo period uh, the number of transactions and they have arrived at an average considering the transaction from 1995 to 2012 which is ranging from 21.5% to 58.8% and they have also considered an average from 2008 to 2012 which is ranging from uh, 16 or 17% to uh, 47% our last approach is the security based approach okay let's try to understand the logic behind using option pricing theory to calculate the uh, discount lack of marketability now let's say i am a shareholder and i have one stock worth 100 dollar now when we discuss the lack of marketability what is the risk the risk is that let's say after one year uh, when i'm going to sell the share if the value of share decline from 100 to 80 or 70 i can realize a loss of 20 or 30 dollar now to mitigate this risk what i can do is i can buy a put option so i can buy a put option at a strike price of 100 if the price will go down from 100 to 80 i will lose out on the basis of spot price but i will gain on my put option similarly after one year if let's say the price is goes down from 100 to uh, 60 on the basis of spot price i may realize a loss of 40 dollar but on the put option i can gain in 40 dollar so in a way put option is helping me to mitigate my risk but in order to mitigate this risk i have to buy a put option and to buy a put option the cash outflow from investor side is the payment of the premium because to buy a option either call option or put option any uh, option holder has to pay the premium so basically the premium that the investor is paying to mitigate the risk is the discount so let's take an example the value of my share is 10 and uh, i have paid i have bought a put option and paid a premium of 2 dollar so in this case the discount lack of marketability is 2 dollar divided by 10 dollar which is 20% so let's go through the slide security based approach utilizes theoretical option pricing model illiquidity estimates demonstrated by traded stock prices and option prices uh, shop authored a 1993 study in which he related the cost to purchase a european put option to delom Uh, he concluded that if one holds restricted or non marketable stock and purchases an option to sell those share at a free market price the holder as in effect purchase marketability for those shares the price of the put is the discount for lack of marketability the input in the black scholes model are stock prices strike prices time to uh, expiration uh, interest rate and volatility the general greeks of uh, black scholes or option pricing model so other known approaches are long staff study and finerty study they are somewhere so they, they the, the principle is uh, option pricing model only but they used a different uh, strike price or you know slight variation of what we are going to uh, study so we are going to discuss the european put model and uh, so last time when we used the option pricing model we calculated the value of call option but uh, in the case of discount lack of marketability we will arrive at a price of put so let's go to the model and uh, calculate discount lack of marketability so this was the formula for call value which we built from uh, scratch uh, if you haven't seen my last video i'll encourage you to go and check that video so we need all of these inputs to calculate our delom so i'll just simply paste it over here and we will also copy the formula one of the input of black scholes uh, model is d1 and d2 which we calculated uh, last time so the formula will remain the same in case of put option or call option so i'll paste the formula one of the assumption in this model is that your strike price and your spot price is going to remain the same so i have taken uh, one uh, this is a risk free rate which we used uh, in our model the implied volatility is 28% for 
or what we can do is we can uh, you know calculate the implied volatility to arrive at the implied volatility since our company is uh, privately held so as a proxy you can use the comparable companies or you can use the index of your industry so at the time of calculating beta we have uh, uh, calculated the return for nifty it because uh, we have assumed that our company our subject company is an it industry so here i have already calculated the return this is going to be our benchmark so i'll highlight in green now what we can do is we can calculate the lock okay then i have to calculate standard deviation so stdev standard deviation of all of these numbers remember this is in percentage term so to arrive at a percentage value I'll divide by this is our standard deviation now in order to calculate the volatility all we need to do is this multiply by square root of number of working days that is 256 and this is our volatility value so volatility is 34 percent so i am going to input this 34 percent in my dlom model and now i'll calculate the put value so the value of put is the so x is so is equal to x is your strike price multiply by e raised to the power e raised to the power minus r which is uh, your risk free rate so minus r multiply by t t is your time to maturity bracket close multiply by 1 minus normal distribution of d2 so normal distribution norms this normal distribution of d2 which is this value uh, bracket close minus p0 which is spot price so this multiply by bracket 1 minus uh, normal distribution normal distribution of d1 which is this value and enter so this is your put value now all i need to do is to calculate the d long this value divided by the spot price which is 25 percent so 25 percent is our discount lack of marketability so this is your discount lack of marketability now to arrive at a post marketability value this was our per share equity value free discount and uh, post and post discount this value will be this multiplied by 1 minus the discount rate which is this rate this is the post marketability per share value of common shareholders one thing to note over here is that uh, for implied volatility we normally use the asset volatility but in my example i have calculated the equity volatility but it is fine in this case because uh, our company is IT company and IT company majority of the capital structure comprises of uh, equity shareholding. So we are done with calculation of uh, DLOM. I hope you had a great session as usual and I see you the next time. Thank you so much.